So I'm sitting now on my computer here. Actually, I just wanted to go into the internet and want to have a look what is the cheapest possible speaker I can get, which is actually comparable to the small speaker inside the Bose box I just showed you. So actually, I chose now the platform Wish because on Wish you really, really get a lot of extremely cheap stuff. And also the shipping is most of the time also extremely cheap, like only one or two euros or so. I mean, I don't want to make any advertisement for this platform now, but I think it's perfect for the project because, as I said, I want to have my speaker as uh, cheap as possible. And yeah, I think this is then the right platform for this. So let's have just a look for a loudspeaker and have a look what we get. So you can see, okay, here we get some fun stuff uh, like a megaphone or we also get sound bars and Bluetooth speakers. Um, but actually that's not what we need. Maybe something like this, but this is more like an automotive speaker. But yeah, let's see. Something like this is, I think, okay. I mean, here in this case, we are getting two pieces of a two inch speakers, which is rated with three watts at four ohms. Also, they, so they are saying that this is a full range speaker. And yeah, actually it costs only like two euros. I mean, you can get maybe the assumption of the quality of the speaker in the end for that low price. But I would say we can just try it out. I mean, there are also no further information here about the speaker or any technical details, so it will be hard to make a good enclosure in the end for it. But I would say let's just buy it. I think the shipping is also not that expensive in the end. Let's have a look. Yeah, I mean, one euro here to Germany. I'm now sitting here on my CAD software tool on my computer to show you the loudspeaker enclosure I designed for the two drivers um, I ordered on Wish. Here you can see this is just the um, front side of the loudspeaker in the end. We have this edge roughly like 14 centimeters and this edge here uh, like roughly six centimeters. And we have two big holes which are two inch. And my idea is in the end that I put in the speakers from the back side and that I will just glue them here then in the holes later on. Then let me show you once again the back side of the loudspeaker. Uh, from the dimensions actually it has also here like 14 centimeters and 6 centimeters and it has here like 6.5 centimeters. So in sum the overall speaker uh, volume will be something like 0 0.7 liters. In case you're wondering now if I did any calculations on the enclosure here, unfortunately I have to say no, because you also didn't have any information from the wish page, so it also doesn't make sense to make any further calculations because I don't have any technical data. And here you can see once again a small um, best reflex port. And later on I will put in the cable here and I will put or I will glue the front cover then here on this edge and yeah, let's see. I'm now finished with the assembly of the speaker. Um, yeah, on the first glance you can see it's looking a little bit shitty because I did it also quite uh, quick and dirty. And I just used some silicon to put uh, the two parts from the 3D printer together and also to glue the speakers here inside. As you can see, it's yeah, fitting quite good actually. And on the back side here, I made a hole to put in the cable from the amplifier. Yeah, here is my base reflex port. And yeah, actually I needed really a lot of silicon also inside here to get it really leak proof. But yeah, this should work out now for the first test. Maybe I do another enclosure another time, but let's see. Um, yeah, the speaker cable here from the box is actually connected to this amplifier board here. Um, I just also have this amplifier board from eBay. It is just like $10 or so, so also quite cheap. And there is a TDA 7492 or so from um, ST Microelectronics. Um, basically, this is just the audio input. You can see this is the ground and here we have our left and right audio signal. 
And then we have here our filter inductors of the class D amplifier, the um, input capacitor. And here I just connected an old uh, supply for a notebook which has 19 volts. And here I connected um, my speaker. Yeah, and below this heatsink there's actually the, the amplifier, so you cannot see it actually so good, um, but it works. Um, in the data sheet, uh, the class D amplifier actually is not rated for uh, 2 ohms because um, in the speaker, if you can remember correctly on Wish, uh, those speakers had 4 ohms and I put them in parallel internally so they have 2 ohms now. But um, as we don't want to use the full power of this amplifier, I don't think that we uh, get really the maximum ratings um, from current perspective outside this amplifier so a 2 ohms uh, mode should be no problem in this case. Yeah, and the input of the amplifier is here connected to an audio DSP. I also bought in the internet, uh, now you should see it. And yeah, actually this is a DSP processor, it's a Sigma DSP from analog devices and it also integrates like um, two analog digital converters and four digital analog converters and you also have some uh, yeah, general I.O. ports where you can also connect some further ADCs or BACs or also some rotary encoders or so and yeah this is actually just extension board where you can just put in your analog signal here and this is the analog output here I connected my amp and this here is the programming adapter. This is connected later on via USB to the computer. And I will use the software Sigma Studio from analog devices. And this is just an I2C connection to the um, um, uh, DSP chip. And all the program code I will generate out of Sigma Studio and transmit into the DSP and will be executed here inside. And the audio input from the um, DSP here, I will just connect to some audio source via a standard mini check cable to my smartphone later on. And here I also have a Zoom H4 uh, recorder and I will use this to make some recordings with a loudspeaker later on that you can hear the difference, how it sounds so with no processing, how it sounds with some equalizer, how it sounds with bass enhancement and so on that you can hear some differences. This is now the IDE from analog device. It's called Sigma Studio. Let's have at first a short look to the hardware configuration. Um, everything here inside is actually somehow module based I would say. Um, you just put in here your USB module. Uh, this is the small PCB I showed you where the USB connector is connected and it makes you an interface to an I2C port which actually interfaces then to the main DSP board and then you can just uh, drag in here the modules like here the ADIU 1701 or DSP and also here a small EEPROM. Idea behind is if you have one time a DSP processing configuration that you can just save all your DSP processor code into the EEPROM and once the ADIU 1701 is started then it loads automatically all the code from the EEPROM into the DSP and starts up without needing starting here the Sigma Studio and put it via USB onto the DSP chip. But this time as we are just testing and checking out I will directly program it now via the USB port here from the software. But now let's have a look to the schematic. Here on the left side I have an input module uh, which you can just hold here from the toolbox and uh, input 0 and input 1 are the two analog inputs from the DSP chip. You also have further inputs but we can't use them at the moment because otherwise we would have to connect some additional ADCs uh, via an I2S interface. So the only usable ports are 1 and 0 here. And then we are feeding our audio signal into this uh, Super Base 1 module. It is actually a base enhancement module. I will explain the algorithm later on once again more in detail. But the main idea is uh, that you say, okay, I have an X over frequency of 90 Hz, for example. And then everything below 90 Hz is actually assumed to be, let's say, base signal. And then based on this um, low pass base signal, it will generate 
some new upper harmonics which are actually added to the signal that in the end your extremely small speaker sounds actually like a big speaker. This is actually what I told you in the introduction what you want to try out and I will do some additional videos and later on where you can hear the difference without DSP processing, um, with equalizing but without the bass module and then once again at the end the full processing structure you also have the bass enhancement module. And here with intensity you can set how strong actually the bass enhancement algorithm will work um, or manipulate your audio signal. And then here I have um, summer. Actually we have here a uh, um, stereo signal and we just want to sum it up to mono signal because we have only one speaker. So I set it both uh, to minus 6 dB because actually it is just half the voltage and we don't want to have any distortion because of too high signal levels. So just put it to minus 6 and it, then it's added equally. Then we have here just a level meter um, to be safe that we are not into a clipping region here. And then we are coming to the um, filter structure. My first filter here is actually just the high pass, which I set to 120 hertz. Idea behind this is that we have actually an extremely small speaker and the drivers and uh, a small volume enclosure actually is not really able uh, to reproduce uh, signals in low, fre low frequency area below let's say 200 hertz or so. So therefore it is also not needed that we amplify uh, those um, low frequency signals because it is only stressing the speaker and the amplifier but we won't have any output in the end in this frequency range. So we are just filtering it and the speaker has less stress than in the end. Then I also put two additional let's say peaking equalizers. Um, usually you would use then a microphone in front of the speaker and make some measurements with pink noise for example and to see okay how do I have to adjust my equalizers but in this case I only made it somehow quick and dirty and put some filters and just adjusted them how I think it should sound like. Yeah, then I just have here 1k peaking um, equalizer and I just pushed it to plus 10 dB because um, without any further equalizing uh, the, the speaker um, don't have any real high frequency it uh, puts out and then I also have a peaking equalizer here at 600 hertz uh, to get more low frequency. And then I just have the signal here and put it to DAC0 and DAC1. So in the end, as you can see, I don't have that much magic here, but um, I think you can also extend it in the end if you want to get more out of your speaker configuration. The working principle of the bass enhancement is actually quite easy. Let's assume we have an input signal, one time with 50 Hz and one time with 1 kHz. The 50 Hz signal is then low pass filter, there is low pass filter here, which is of course adjustable. And then we have left over here only our base domain signals. This is in this case 50 Hz. Based on this information, we'll calculate a Fourier transform and then it detects, oh, my highest peak for example was at 50 Hz. And then it calculates all the upper harmonics like 100 Hz, 150 Hz, 200 Hz and so on. And then in the end here the signal is summed up here and here that we have then a mix actually out of our original signal and one time the new generated harmonic signals. Of course you have here one time again that you can set actually how strong the bass enhancement will work in the end. And as you can see we still have here our 50 Hz signal but also the upper harmonics like 100, 150 and so on and still our 1 kHz signal. And this is going fed to the speaker in the end.
Yeah, thank you for watching my video. I hope you liked it and enjoyed it. Um, in case you have further question, just leave me a comment below the video. And of course, please like my new channel here. Uh, to be honest, this is now my first video I uploaded here, but I guess in case I have some further ideas about electronics or audio related stuff, then for sure I will do another one. See you guys.